a Norman Rockwell Christmas. Welcome to Christmas. This is a very special Christmas because it was created by Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell has become America's most popular and beloved artist. Uh, in a recent poll, people were asked, would you rather have a Rembrandt, a Picasso, or a Rockwell for your home? <laughs> Nearly everyone chose Mr. Rockwell. I think we love Rockwell because he painted ordinary people doing everyday things. There are pictures we can identify with, but he had a special touch because to him, no one was ordinary. Each person was special in his own way. And he felt that folks were at their special best at holidays, particularly at his favorite holiday, Christmas. So. Gather the family around while we enjoy the warmth and the love and the, and the humor of a Norman Rockwell Christmas. Rockwell's pictures began appearing in the early 1900s. And uh, as a result, people today think that those early paintings are very nostalgic. <laughs> But the fact is, he painted them to look nostalgic, even then. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we look back at some of his earliest Christmas and holiday art. Let's go. 
there was another face that Rockwell painted almost as often as he painted Santa's. His own. <laughs> Just as Alfred Hitchcock made unannounced appearances in his movies, Mr. Rockwell included himself in many of his paintings. Now, here he is in the famous triple self-portrait. And here is how he looks in quite a few others. So be on the lookout for him. You never know where he might show up. Rockwell claimed that the most difficult part of being a painter was coming up with ideas. For instance, he did over 300 covers for the Saturday Evening Post alone, plus hundreds and hundreds of illustrations for books and ads. That's how his fame began when he did his first post cover. There was no television back then, and almost every family in America read the Saturday Evening Post. Here is Norman Rockwell to tell you just how it happened when he appeared on the Edward R. Murrow Show in 1959. Norman, uh, you've been identified with the Saturday Evening Post for many, many years. When did you do your first cover for them? Well, Ed, uh, uh, this happens to be the original of the first cover I did. I don't know whether it was before you were born or not. It was <laughs> no, 1916. Not well, that's uh, 40, what is it, 43 years ago, about that. And uh, this is the original of it. In those days, we used only red and black. Mm -hmm. How many have you done since? Well, I think somebody counted, I think over 320. Rockwell's annual Christmas cover marked the arrival of the Christmas season. It was a national event. Merry Christmas, Mr. Albert. From the sound of that voice, could you be one of Santa's elves? No, but I wish I were. I'm just Ross Mellinger. Oh. Are you sure you're not one of Santa's elves? No, I'm not really. I'm just Ross. Hmm, Ross Mellinger? Well, I've been seeing you on television and in the movies. How long have you been acting? Since I was five. Five? How old are you now? Eight. Eight? Wow. <laughs> Let's see, you've been at it over three years. You're getting to be an old pro, huh? Well, not as old as you are, Mr. Albert. Nobody is as old as I am. Oh. Except maybe Santa Claus. And you're almost as famous as he is. Well, speaking of famous, uh, let's get back to what, what made Mr. Rockwell famous. Now, here is one of his best-known Christmas covers, Union Station. It was 1944, and the train stations were crowded with servicemen, and there was a song that said it all, I'll be home for Christmas.
I think the pictures that you saw showed how ingenious Mr. Rockwell was at capturing the spirit of this country. In fact, in 1977, President Ford presented him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award for his vivid and affectionate portraits of our country. What kind of portraits did he mean? Well, uh, take the faces of America that he painted, the faces of the people that do the work, who live next door, uh, who look just like your relatives, like these portraits. Some of those faces did look like my relatives. <laughs> well, he liked people. He liked Christmas. I'll tell you another subject that he liked. What? He liked Charles Dickens. Didn't Charles Dickens live in England? Right. You see, when he and his brother Jarvis were growing up, their father read to them almost every night. And their favorite author was Charles Dickens. Rockwell said that that had a lot to do with him because Dickens wrote about the kind of people that I paint, he said.
those Dickens Christmas characters. The only one that was missing was Scrooge. I'll tell you my favorite Rockwell Christmas characters, the ones in New York. Is that because you starred in musicals on Broadway in New York? How in the world did you know that? My mom told me. Oh. Is there a song about Christmas and New York? As a matter of fact, yes, there is. Silver Bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Not all of Norman Rockwell's Christmas paintings were light-hearted, humorous. His powerful images really were worth a thousand words. In his painting, Uneasy Christmas in the Birthplace of Peace, we see Arab and Israeli soldiers standing shoulder to shoulder, guarding the Christian Christmas Eve procession in Bethlehem as it enters the manger where Christ was born. Rockwell was showing us the true meaning of Christmas. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men.
hope for the poor, achievement for yourself, greatness for your nation. I don't recognize that voice. Who was it? President Lyndon B. Johnson. He must have been before my time. I guess Mr. Rockwell was too. Did he live a long time ago? For you, yes. Uh, for me, no. <laughs> Most folks uh, think of Mr. Rockwell as a country boy, but he was born in New York City back in 1894. He grew up in Mimaranek, which is just outside of New York. He started to take art lessons. He said he had the feeling that there was boundless opportunity in this country and there was nothing to keep you from becoming a success. That's what my dad says. It is up to me. Mm. Uh, after he was married, he moved his family out of the city to Arlington, Vermont. And from there to Stockbridge, Massachusetts. He loved Stockbridge. He said it was the best of America and the best of New England. Uh, this was Main Street at Christmas. And this is the historic Red Lion Inn. It dates back to 1773. There's an early 1900s Christmas party going on inside. Let's have a look. Now, here are the Christmas on Main Street characters in the 1920s. Laughing all the way, bells and bob to ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a slaying song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh A day or two ago I thought I'd take a ride 
soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank. Misfortune seemed his lot. During Christmas in the 30s, the Stockbridge folks looked like this. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle, 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 jing
The Gossips is a small town painting. It took Rockwell eight years to finish it. He couldn't figure out who the last couple should be. And then it came to him. The gossip was about himself. And he should be telling off the woman who started it. I think she said, he said, that there was no Santa Claus. And Rockwell never would have said anything like that. No wonder he told her off. You know, Ross, Christmas is more than just Santa Claus and presents. Christmas is a time of warmth and love and thanksgiving. And now, people all over the world are able to give thanks at Christmas for some things that we have always taken for granted. Some things that Norman Rockwell memorialized for all time to come. The Four Freedoms. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom of... Fear. Yeah. Fear, yes, that's right. Rockwell heard President Roosevelt spell out the four freedoms in a speech, and then he painted them. The first is freedom of speech and expression everywhere in the world. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way everywhere in the world. The third is freedom from want, which translated into world terms means economic understandings which will secure to every nation a healthy peacetime life for its inhabitants everywhere in the world. The fourth is freedom from fear, which translated into world terms means a worldwide reduction of armaments to such a point and in such a thorough fashion that no nation will be in a position to commit an act of physical aggression against any neighbor anywhere in the world. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land of the pilgrim's pride, land where our fathers died, from every mountainside let freedom ring. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Must be our guest. Ross, answer the door. Mm. Thank you. Hmm. Hello. Hmm. You're uh, far too pretty to be one of uh, Santa's elves. Oh. <laughs> you must be uh, Abigail Rockwell. Yes, Norman Rockwell, Pop. 
as we called him, as ah. my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Please. I suppose everyone asks you if you paint. Yeah, they always ask, but no, I'm an actress. And I'm here today to represent all of the Rockwell family. I'd like you to meet them as he painted them. This is my father, Tom Rockwell, and his brothers, Jerry and Peter. This is their mother, Mary. Here are all the Rockwell wives and grandchildren. Gail, my mother, and Cynthia, and... Uh, wait a minute. Where are you? Well, unfortunately, I was the only grandchild not to have their portrait painted. I think I came along a little bit too late, I'm afraid. Say, are you busy after the show? <laughs> Why, Ross? Oh. <laughs> well, no, I'm not, and I'd love to buy you an eggnog. Great. But before we go, I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas from all the Rockwells, and most especially from my grandfather, a very Merry, Merry Christmas from Norman Rockwell. Old timer, how did you like Mr. Rockwell's Christmas? Well, you know, Mr. Albert, I didn't even know that I liked art. <laughs> oh. But I sure do like Mr. Rockwell's. Yeah, it was wonderful to see all of his Christmas paintings. A lot of those are among my favorites. You know, you can see a lot of them at the new Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, uh, Ross, step up here, young man. Sit on my knee. Now tell me what you want for Christmas. All, All I, I want, want for Christmas, Christmas is, is my two front teeth. teeth. All of you, Merry Christmas. A happy holiday. And a wonderful new year.
terrific, Mr. Albert. <laughs>